further ado, uh, my name is Nick Allen. I'm a writer and editor of RogerEbert.com, but most importantly, I'm happy to co-host a Q&A. We're going to have Steve Procopi with me up here, but we're going to have the star, and we're going to have one of the producers up on the stage. Come on up! Yeah, come on. We'll, 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 we'll get on the microphone. We're very close. Yeah. Well, we'll warn her in. Okay, so uh, my first question is kind of a, you know, a open one. Uh, for both of you, what uh, excited you the most and scared you the most about this project? <laughs> That's my son, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so what, what excited you and scared you the most about taking on this project? Oh, man. Well, first of all, poor Shiloh, he's going to be okay. <laughs> um, what excited me the most? Yeah. Um, being entrusted with uh, being such a large part of the story. Uh, I guess that was both the most exciting and the scariest. Uh, I had never done that before. This is the hardest I've ever worked on anything, probably. Um, and uh, it was really rewarding. Excellent. And uh, for you, Seth? Uh, excited, I mean, it was, it was a scripting cast. I mean, when uh, I'd made a previous film with Karim called The Young Kislowski, and um, when he kind of told me about this movie, it, it sounded kind of maybe smaller or more niche. Um, and I was kind of like, ah, oh, what's it gonna be like? And I read the script and just instantly fell in love with it. And then as the cast rounded out, it, I mean, that was the absolute most exciting. Um, and I think hopefully it shows on screen. In terms of what was the scariest, I'll, I'll go really granular with um, uh, a moment from production. Uh, the school, did you all see the school where we shot at? Um, that's actually a Catholic uh, high school <laughs> in Los Angeles. And, and in the location agreement, they specifically said we couldn't have any kind of content that would deal with like homosexuality. Um, side note, they were okay with violence or gunshots. Or <laughs> um, and, and so one of the producers actually had to write a fake script about a girl and her bike. Uh, we told the whole crew they couldn't talk about what the movie was really about, and so for eight days we kind of were living in fear a little bit um, that we might get kicked out. But in the end, they were actually really cool. I think the people that we were actually working with were totally understanding and helpful. But yeah, that was very, very scary as a producer. I asked to read the G-rated script. I don't even know this. I, got, I, I asked to read it, and I read it. I think it's a little bit more sexual. <laughs> like, I think it's, it's a lot more erotic in its repression. What, um, so, so I, I have to ask a follow-up. Have, have they, do they know yet? I know there's been a Sundance. Uh, have they, have they, have, is the jig up? Is the... We have not been contacted. We have told this story numerous times. I think, um, I mean, for, for better or worse, I think schools are generally underfunded and when movies have location fees, um, you know, I don't know. But yeah, we have not, we have not been contacted. That'll be a fun day. <laughs> um, Dylan, let me just ask, because I feel like my, my memory of the film from Sundance is that you spend a lot of this time either very confused or very sad. Is that, how, like, just as an actor, how does that, does it take its toll on you? Does it, does it, or, or do you sort of, as an actor, just sort of embrace it and say, this is what I've been waiting to do as an actor, just tackle something that is going to scare me a little and just try me a little? and. I feel like it's both. I was like excited and waiting for something to take its toll on me. And it did. I realized, uh, I kind of wish I could go back and sort of do the things we did toward the end of the shoot again, because I was just really sad at that point. And I didn't do a great job, because I was just depressed. And I remember uh, somebody in the sound department, like the last day, it was just like, you know what I was thinking? Anne's life sucks. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. That's where I've been for 25 days, thanks. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. Do you uh, find acting to be kind of acting to be comfortable, or do you find it to be like a more stressful or high and intense kind of experience? Um, I don't think it's comfortable. I mean, I, I don't okay. know. Uh, I mean, there are much more uncomfortable. I'm not like you know in a mine or using my hands. Sure. It, you know, it's very comfortable. But um, uh, it's it was a very intense experience to believe that those things are happening. Those are very traumatic things for anybody. Yeah. Um, so that in a in a very small way, I feel like I went through them. And uh, when you're working with Rihanna, how much time do you guys have to work on chemistry? And a little bit. We had like a week of yeah, rehearsal, which was, like which was about like an hour a day at Karim's apartment. <laughs> and <laughs> um, so we didn't really get to chat that much. Um, she's just really good at acting. 
so <laughs> it was easy. You, you all recognize me. Rihanna, right? Yeah. The other girl from Deadpool, right? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Because sure. when we saw the movie, that was the first thing I ever saw her in, so Deadpool came later for me. But I recognized her because the trailer had been out already, so I'm like, she looks kind of familiar. So, but just, I mean, did, were, you, were you guys, were you like, to get along on set, or when you're playing a role like this, do you kind of, does it benefit at all to sort of keep your distance? And Because you are supposed to be sort of at odds with each other a lot of the time, but what, what was the relationship like just between the two of you? I got really lucky that everybody is really nice on the you know production end and the cast. Everybody, I mean it genuinely. I'd be saying this either way, but it's true. Um, everybody is lovely, so uh, maybe I should have. Maybe that would have benefited our performances, but we hung out. Um, but uh, you know, the only day I can think about keeping distances was the bedroom scene day. Mateo and I just couldn't look at each other. Um, we were just both going through our own shit. <laughs> When you're making this movie, you even when you're talking about pre-production and even on set, what were some films or even non-movie references or influences you guys were talking about? I don't know. You've been asked that before. That's a great question. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of, of references we went through. I, I mean, the, the 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 comp that I often think about this movie with it was a, a short-lived TV series called My So-Called Life. Yeah. Oh, sure. that, that I loved. And that that I, I think was um, and just kind of reaching the authenticity in that, but um, but I mean I think it's a it's to a large credit to Karam, who's who's the writer director, Karam Sangha, and the actors, and, and also the the cinematographer Rick Diaz and the rest of the team, is that we've worked together before so many times. I feel like there there already was an intrinsic language among the team, in a way that that kind of pushed it forward, and that I mean everyone is extremely film literate. The team, but um, but yeah, it wasn't so many references as much as kind of the, the familiarity with each other that I think brought it up. And for you, um, was there any performance or any movies he was showing you, or I don't know, some, people, some directors do that, some don't. I'm just wondering if that, or was it more just you taking it on your own? Uh, this is this is gonna make me look really bad. Karen and I recently went back and saw, like, looked at our first emails between each other about, like, you know, we're so excited that you're part of this or whatever. And he told me to watch a movie that I never watched. <laughs> Which movie? I don't remember. It's a. Can sweet, you pull up the email? In, I could pull up the email. Oh gosh. Where I'm like, Tim Heidecker's in it. That's great. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's really bad. He's like, watch this. It's similar, totally. And I just didn't. Which I think it speaks to how much I grew as an as an actor because now I would be all excited to do my research and that kind of shit. Um, I didn't watch it. He did. <laughs> Wait, you say you don't remember what it was? It was a Swedish movie about two girls in love. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Maybe. That's what I'm I don't know. <laughs> I didn't see it. It doesn't narrow it down. Either, so. So uh, for you then, if it wasn't kind of movies or some type of extra text, what was it for you that kind of was your entry point and your interest? You know, like what was, you really wanted to tell this story? Um, oh man, well that's as simple as like, I don't get the opportunity to read uh, three-dimensional female characters very often. Um, there, she's like a flawed human being who's for the most part good and the, you know, so I don't, I don't get to have a lot to work with very often. So that alone is enough. Um, and then it's also just a great story that I'd want to be in service of. Excellent. Uh, did you, just uh, sort of the, the road to production, was, was, there, was there anything uh, notable about the, you know, getting the money, getting the people together, um, or was it a fairly standard issue process? It, no, it, it was struggling and... I mean, first of all, just let me say, I, I, I was born and raised in Chicago, so to have a film play on the screen was amazing. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, Deborah at the festival, for bringing the film here. Um, this project I, I was extremely special. It happened very quickly. I, I mean, I think from uh, the initial inception of the idea was in the summer of 2014, um, that before script, right? And so then we were shooting in the summer of 2015, and here we are, we're not even in the summer of 2016, the movie's already been out and, and playing a bunch. Um, I, I think the key was keeping the core team from our previous projects together. And there was just, um, you know, when you're, when you're on a movie and everything's working, it's like summer camp or a party. 
And, and it was something where I think, uh, in general, you know, this movie had a very tiny budget. I mean, you couldn't even buy a one-bedroom condo in this part of town <laughs> <laughs> spent on this film. Um, but I think because of that, you, even when you're not paying people a lot of money, people only work on stuff because they love the material. And that makes for a better team. We actually, we have one of our crew members in the audience. Woo! Gus, you want to stand up? He actually appears on screen. Yeah, Gus! Woo! Um, and and, and that, 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 to me, is what was more. So, oh, you, no, no. okay. <laughs> um, this is kind of for you, uh, Dylan. Um, the process we're talking like it's a really, it's an indie project. Obviously, it's really short, and there's not a lot of time. So, is that a lot of that your costumes, or, or is it the dialogue? Is that well, how much of that is kind of you literally? Is that your bike? You know, like, great question. Did you make up the dialogue? You know, all that kind of stuff. Um, the dialogue I had nothing to do with at all. Uh, same thing with the bike. The clothes. <laughs> are mostly mine. Nice. As you can tell, I also dress weird. <laughs> and um, so, I mean, the costume designer and I just really uh, hit it off, and she really let me be part of her process. And that was a big part of my uh, creative process with Anne, was her clothes. Um, and also, I just got really lucky, like stuff like my really gross Converse are literally from <laughs> sixth grade, and I have like a little smiley face I drew in gym class on them. So I had that like to look down at all the time, so it was really great. And, and the bike was ultimately, unfortunately, stolen oh. two months after. Oh, Eric. That's sad. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was maybe meant to be, but <laughs> did, did, uh, Let me ask you this, Dylan. Did, what, what was about this character was the least like you, that you had to make the biggest adjustment to play her, or was it all pretty, pretty that's, fitting? That's like how I think about characters, I, so I start with myself and then I think about what's different. And the things that helped me was like, I think if uh, everybody either responds to negativity first with sadness and then anger, or then anger and then sadness, I feel like we're the opposite, like I just like get sad and stay sad, whereas I feel like Anne is quick to anger and is in touch with her anger. Um, so that was helpful to me, and then also she grew up where it was warm. <laughs> I don't know, that doesn't make sense to anybody else, but that helped me a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, we, do we have more time for yeah, yeah. up? Okay, yeah. I don't want to take, take away time, but one of the big scenes certainly is like the trial at school, where everyone's together and you, you don't have much dialogue, but your reaction shots are so painful and so forth. I want to kind of go through what that scene was like, kind of filming that with everybody together and the process, how much time you have to shoot that and rehearsing and so forth. Yeah, it was, I mean, that was intense because you, you kind of had, we were able to schedule out actors on different days and there's different parts. And that was the one day we needed everyone to be in the same place at the same time. And uh, I remember we hired a second camera team for that day. And we all had kind of had a conversation where you kind of, you know, whatever, you, you, you spit in your hand or you put blood. You say, we're not going to reshoot this, like, get it today or don't do it. And um, and I mean, the team just did an amazing job. The actors totally brought it that day. And, and what was really interesting in the edit process is a lot of the performances changed a lot in, in that scene. Uh, some characters were made angry or some were made less angry. And it, it was an important adjustment as character arcs were adjusted during editorial for the rest of the movie, because this is kind of the end of the arc for almost every character. Um, and because of that, I was so glad Karim did an amazing job of just kind of getting a variety of performances in each take. Um, and reaction shots. I mean, we kind of had, I don't know, if, I mean, they were, they, I don't think they cut on that day. They would just kind of keep on, when they, we'd go around the room, they would just keep on, if they were getting a single on one of the actors, they'd just keep filming because there might be that little bit of reaction that maybe was during, uh, you know, just a break or something else, but if that moment was caught and worked well in the final edit, it helps us achieve the story. Um, what? You got into Sundance, which is a, I don't know if young Kislowski got into Sundance or was no, that No, I didn't. Okay, so so this is your first time? It was my, yeah, I've done 15 films. It was my first film first to get into Sundance. Wow. And then we, and we won the Audience Award in that competition. Right. So that, I mean, that, that's a huge deal. And yet, and, and of course, second only to being here. But um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, Make sure you vote. Well, yeah. um, so, but what, what, um, Talk about that experience, getting in and then being so well received, and then also talk about what, what, where does the future hold for this film? Sure, sure. I mean, that was an amazing experience. Uh, uh, Karim got a call from the, one of the programmers who called me. I thought he was joking. I thought it was like a, a Thanksgiving prank. Uh, but it was huge. I mean, I've, um, it was really cool. It's, it's, it's something that, at least for me, felt very fresh. 
Um, cause there's, there's a lot of festivals um, and they're all really special. Sundance is obviously an extremely special one and to have never had a film there, to take a film there, um, for, for me was like a really new and exciting feeling. Um, the week was great. It was, it's, it's, it, for the, I mean, I assume a lot of people here maybe have been to Sundance or maybe not. Um, the first four days are crazy. It's just extremely intense, um, right for the premiere. It's not, it's enjoyable in a way, but it's, it's more, um, kind of just full on like heart throbbing. And then, and then the second week things, things kind of relaxed. I got to see a lot of films and meet a lot of great filmmakers and got to go skiing. And then winning the award kind of was, was just the total capstone. I mean, that was an amazing evening. And from where it goes from here, I mean, we're playing a ton of festivals. It is extremely difficult for independent films to, to reach audiences, and so that's why we're so grateful for festivals like these. We encourage everyone to go to our Facebook page. Just look up Young Kislowski. Um, and we, or sorry, first girl I love. <laughs> look up either. They're both good. Both of them. Um, but um, uh, Young Kislowski is on Netflix, so you can see that. But um, uh, this film will, we, we actually, we have, we have five offers on the table, so right now we're trying to figure out what is best. So it will, it will be available commercially, um, but I'm not sure how many opportunities we're going to have to play theaters like this, so thank you again. So that, that's just my way of leading into, if you like the film, you have probably many, many months to tell the world. So the word of mouth is a huge deal, even, even prior to signing a distribution deal. <laughs> so yes, talk about it for months and months. Uh, just before, uh, we have a microphone here if anyone has questions. Just line, just line up over here, the questions. Um, and Nick, why don't you ask one more? Okay, you. I've got one. Um, so to see a movie set in high school, aside from the stuff about sexuality and so forth, to have a story about consent, or a lot of issues about consent, is really kind of stunning, I'd say. So thank you for showing that. Um, but did you guys talk about that a lot, or was that something that kind of was just in the script and wanted to play, or what kind of conversations, I guess, about this material? I mean, I think those, those conversations started at the script stage. They, they went through the way that that scene was shot and all the way through, I mean, that was, that was the scene that was probably most adjusted in editorial. Uh, we did lots of test screenings. We ended up having to kind of separate genders in test screenings. Mm -hmm. We began to notice that, that women, if, if there were mixed screenings, we wouldn't get as much feedback from women. So we did some female only screenings, which were extremely enlightening. And um, yeah, it, it, it's, I, I really think in, at the end, I, I'm really happy with where it landed. And a lot of that goes, I mean, Karam edited that, at the end, edited that scene himself, really put his final stamp on it. Um, but, but I do remember, you know, when we shot that scene, I mean, as a producer, that was a re remarkably easy day. Because it was like, you know, they were in a room and, and I mean, no one wanted, like, it was extremely intense for the actors. But the editor called me that night, he was looking at dailies, and he's, and he's worked on Terrence Malick movies, amazing films, and he said that is the best scene he's ever been given to edit. And that's a testament. Wow. To wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Or? Um, I mean, as the conversations I had about it were yeah. also sort of very minimal. Um, that we didn't rehearse that scene, we tried to, and I was like physically shaking, and we just, and we were like, you know what, just, let's just do it. No, I'm not going to talk about it. And Karam kind of stayed out of the way that day. He kind of left it to me and Mateo. I think if, if we had been doing something he didn't like, he'd come in and adjust. But for the most part, I didn't really see him. Yeah, which was not true ever again. <laughs> Sick of him. We've got a question at the yeah. microphone. This is an amazing film. This is the kind of film I wish was playing on every screen in America rather than Nicholas Sparks movies. I think these replaced would be great. Um, I want to ask about the editing process with, I just loved how you get a little bit of a moment here and then it expands on the moment later where you see like, you know, the, the first kiss between the two characters, between the guy and the girl, then you don't see really what happens until after. I just liked how the film really just, it's an amazing structure, how it's all edited together. I wanted to know if that was at the beginning, if it was always structured like that or if that was something that was found through the process. No, thank you for that question. It was absolutely found. I mean, and that's a huge testament to the editor and director. Um, what, what, what we found in going through the process and the test screenings is that in the script, we actually played a lot more with uh, manipulating time, of uh, moving things where they might not fit, and almost every time we went back into the edit, we put things more aligned into time to eventually now we kind of have these three flashbacks, if you will, and, and the points where we cut into them and how much, if you notice, they kind of, we repeat about four or five beats every time we cut back, so it kind of gives you hopefully gives the audience a little bit of, of, of the orientation to watch the rest of the flashback. Um, and that was, it was really hard. <laughs> like on it, and it wasn't, it wasn't by initial design, but it, but it was a testament. It was by like, 
doing the work and listening to test audiences and, and really getting the perspective right because um, yeah, we, we got a lot of really harsh feedback early on about that. So I'm really happy to hear you ask that now. Oh, Thank you. Good. Wonderful. <laughs> So Phil did the film in order. Did you do it sequentially because there were flashbacks? I mean, how did you film? And then did you do any improvisation? Or was everything scripted? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, we, we, we definitely did not shoot it in order. Um, just the, log the practical logistics of locations required that we shoot out locations. So we, we started with the homes. We went to the schools. We had like a week of running around the city, which was crazy. And actually, the last night of the shoot, is the softball game that opens the movie. Um, but, but in terms of improv, maybe you? None. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes Karen would say, like, well, what do you think she would say here? And I would say, you tell me. <laughs> uh, and then he would. <laughs> Jerem sometimes, I have seen this when he's, he's direct, he's writer-director, it's kind of typical. He'll be standing next to the, the camera or the monitor as the lines are being delivered, and I see him mouthing lines. Really? And, yeah, yeah, and I think it's just his way of getting the cadence. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of funny, because it's like, oh, I mean, it's good, directors should have a vision. But yeah, it's kind of, it is an interesting way, just different approaches. There's that question of authenticity in the movie. It's written by a man, and it's about teenage uh, girls and so forth. For you, were there, I mean, you mentioned that he would ask you for advice, but I don't know, how did, uh, did you, did he have a lot of adjustments, or did he kind of, did he sound legit, like, when you got the script, or? Oh, I mean, definitely. I mean, I can only think yeah. of a few things. It would be really, it's really funny. I can think of things where he would say why Anne was doing something, and I would know that she would do that, but why was wrong. Okay. If that makes any sense. Like, all the beats were correct, but he didn't know why. We've had those kind of conversations where he said, like, I'll just know this is emotionally true, I don't know why. <laughs> and I'll, I'll know why, and that's my job. <laughs> it's like an inner science. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Oh, I thought there was somebody there. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, um, I just wanted to say, in terms of movies about the current generation, it really showed a real love letter to what it's you know, like for kids to live today. And I loved how the film showed how, uh, despite some of the choices that may have been made morally questionable, specifically uh, when Sasha was um, not exactly saying that she did like go ahead and kiss it. And I was wondering, how did uh, you guys come, both from like an acting perspective and from a producing perspective, making the movie, how you came to approach these characters through such a three-dimensional realm that nobody was like a cookie-cutter character anyway? Well, I'll just say from, for, as a producer, for me, um, like character is, one of the, is obviously one of the most important elements. And for me, it's, it's, you read on page the characters and you get a good sense for them, but then when you bring the right actor in to play the roles, it, it literally makes it a three-dimensional character. And, and I mean, that's something where uh, one of the other producers, David Hunter, we didn't have a casting director on this movie, so, so we all did it ourselves, and David Hunter, one of the other producers, kind of led that effort. Um, Dylan's probably too embarrassed to say this, but uh, David saw Dylan like three years ago. She, she read for him. Uh, should I tell the whole story? I don't know. I'll tell the whole story, basically. And, um, and, and David was like, this Dylan Galula, she's amazing. She's gonna be a star. And, and, uh, and Karen was a little like, like oh yeah, yeah, okay, sure, sure. And, and, and then Dave brought her name up to be the lead in this movie for, from the get-go. And Karen was a little dismissive and, and stuff. And then, um, and then I guess Karen tuned into Netflix. I'm not sure if there's any fans of Kimmy Schmidt. And uh, it's like, there's this girl on the show and she's kind of amazing. David's like, that's Dylan Galula! <laughs> oh, Pete? Oh, no, I was gonna say, did you, did you wanna add to that about sort of avoiding the, the cliches of playing a teenager? Um, I don't know. I look, it's weird, like I look back, I did uh, some acting as a teenager, and I realized like I was, I was not good, but um, I, <laughs> played teenage girls dumb. Like I just uh, just started off dumb. And then a uh, director one time told me like, just let her be as smart as you are. And then I think my own uh, appreciation for teenage girls helps me make sure they're three dimensional. Thanks. Uh, anyone else? If not, uh, Seth and Dylan will actually are gonna hang out in the music box lounge for a little while and yeah. talk to you guys if you want to. But if there's no more questions, we can wrap it up and clear the theater. 
All right. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you so guys much. so much. Thank, thank you for coming out.